teaching psychologist, but this experience actually made me like think about maybe becoming a teacher. Really? Same here. Yeah. yeah. Same. I also want to be Same. a teacher. Yeah. Maybe get a Quality say, everybody act according to the season that they born in. Some in the night, some in the morning, some at noon. Some in winter, some in June. It's all cool. It's a natural This group of students really just could not wait to volunteer to have an opportunity to work with younger children. We showed them the materials. They really had a chance to think about what these ideas meant for them. What did it mean that they could get smart? What did that mean about difficulties they'd had before? What did it mean about their potential futures? And as seniors, it was really a great time in their lives for us to be able to catch them then and have those conversations. The process then, after they went through their own training, involved them actually going through learning to become trainers, which is a very involved process. Students would come and be with us. They'd learn some new content. They'd practice it together in groups, so actually standing up and delivering the content, figuring out places where they were really strong in doing so, figuring out areas they needed to work on. They would then go out after having had several weeks of training and deliver efficacy content to students. Do you guys ever do that to one another? Yes. 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 So how are we going to act on our strong side next time? Um, but safe, but be nice. Why is feedback important? Why do I need to listen to feedback? Because if you don't think you'll lose your best voice. Raise your hand. That's a good answer. So you use the steps. You think you can, you work hard, and you get smart. Can I see everybody do it? Think you can, work hard, get smart. Very good. Okay. the concepts that um, the efficacy campaign gave to us is just, I think it's really good for the students because they get to learn another outlet or learn that they can do anything no matter what the situation is. I think they really like efficacy. They don't, we don't really call it efficacy. They always say, oh yeah, work hard, yep. get smart. Some of the efficacy concepts that I like that the kids use was effective effort and they at least tried the problems and they helped each other out even if the answer wasn't necessarily correct and I like it. And um, they also use the things that we taught them like when, for example, we would ask them, is that usually a strong side or your weak side? And they would turn it around and use it with each other and ask each other, you know, so they started to apply the stuff we taught them. There was this boy, Johnny, and he had a karate competition, and he was really nervous, he didn't want to go. And then um, he was telling everyone how he just wants to stay at home and not go to his karate competition. And one of the kids was like, remember what Rawa and Victor taught us? If you think you can, then you'll be able to and stuff. And they were just using the examples we gave him. That's awesome. And then he went and he did a good job, and he recorded it for his class, and they watched That's his karate help. competition. Oh. That's awesome. <laughs> What I found in talking with the principals about the effect is they also really felt like this was creating a change. They could see in classrooms where students were getting efficacy that there was a shift in the culture, that students were trying harder, that they were supporting each other more, that they were really ready to work, and when they didn't get it the first time, they weren't upset and frustrated and falling over, which is what we've learned to do in our culture around failure. Well, at a very young age, these children are becoming immunized. And the fact that high school students are delivering the message makes it even more powerful for them because it's children talking to children, kids to kids. They get involved. They really get involved with the kids. And the kids know that. And they like them. If I'm having a difficulty with the students on a particular issue, they'll pick up on it. For example, with homework, reading contracts. And they talk about behaviors that they see in the classroom. So they're applying what they're teaching to real world things, to the things that are happening with the students. And that's helpful. It's like that's they cool. really know the meaning of being comfortable. Because yeah. yeah. we always ask them at the end, like exactly what did they yeah. get out of it? What did they learn? Like we don't leave without asking them what they learned that day. I felt kind of like we were more like a bigger sister, bigger sisters than kind of, you know. Than, yeah, well, like than their teachers. Because yeah. It's kind of like the teacher played a different role in the classroom. It's like, and it's cool to be able to, you know, put a smile on their face when they see you walk through the door. They're like, hi. Yeah. You know, it's like.
makes you feel good because like you know they're really happy to see you like genuinely happy to see you but I think like this experience showed me the importance of giving back to the community and stuff, mm -hmm. especially how important it is. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I think like the fact that we're going there to the schools and stuff, it just shows like, you know, we're, we're giving something to those kids that are going to help them in the future and in turn they're going to make them successful and, you know, it's going to create like a, a domino effect in the community. Yeah. You better wake up in this life. Talking about this life. Remember this in this life. And not only um, do the ideas that we teach the kids help them, but we also learn from them too, especially being in our senior year in high school. You know, there's a lot of things that um, can make your self-esteem go really low. We teach efficacy to people in our class and like teachers at our school look up to us to teach efficacy to the kids at our school because they know that we're learning valuable information that can help us in a lifetime. Now one of the other things that happened and we anticipated that it would is that as the high school students were having these opportunities to teach the lessons to children, they found themselves really needing to integrate the ideas into their own work. They realized that one of the students said in particular, it, it would just be hypocritical of me to be telling the students they should look at their data, they should be making feedback, they should be coming up with new strategies when I wasn't doing those things. So they actually started using them in their own lives and recognizing that when they increase their effort, their achievement magically, no, not magically, through the power of their effort, they were able to create a different reality in their performance in classrooms. So we saw those kinds of things really happening with the high school students, them beginning to take ownership and really understand their own power to change outcomes in their lives and get the outcomes that they were after. With the whole college process, I was just basically, I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. Like, I just wanted to give up. But then it was like, I'm coming here every Friday and I'm teaching these kids, like, don't give up. Just think you can because you can do anything. You actually put your mind to it. I just had to sit down and say, hey, listen, you got to do this. Basically, if in the long run I want to be able to choose my college and to have that choice, I really had to work hard. And I got accepted into five, so get me. <laughs> I really used to think that people were born smart, and I always thought I was the one who wasn't born smart, so I had to work hard to get everything. And then when it came to the kids, a lot of times I would see them give up, and I would always find myself using the terms like, come on, you have to think you can, or come on, use your strong side. So I find myself using the terms with the kids and also using it in my own like, personal school school. In high school, we're seeing, I still see people getting a test back or a grade back and they just pushing it away or they get mad at themselves for not doing it and they say they're stupid and all that. And they're 18 years old. In efficacy, you can't tell the kids, though, you're not born smart. You, you work hard to get smart. Everybody's smart, but you got to work hard to get smart. And then not follow it. Not follow what you're saying to the kids. That's why, that's why efficacy, you got to use it for yourself before you teach it to others. I also used to, like, when I got a bad grade, just throw it away. But that she taught me that use that data, change the feedback, change the strategy. So. Think you can, work hard, work hard and get smart. <laughs> Life's journey from the point where I'm at. Peace to everybody striving to live right and exact. Even though anxieties try to pull you down, see your troubles as a blessing and your homeward bound. Everybody got a struggle, that's the way of the world. Can't develop biceps if you don't do curls. Can't achieve a garden if you never water your crops. If you never pay your dues, then you won't get props. Couldn't eat a proper meal without cooking it first. Can't receive a paycheck if you don't do work. If it wasn't for the rain, then the trees won't grow. When the spring came around, what a sight to bestow. When you face adversity, these dark clouds won't last If you never study How do you expect to pass The grasshoppers laid around While the ants did chores When the winter came around He was left outdoors See the cycle keeps moving Like a big machine Evolution of the mind Soul, body, and being God'll never put up on you More than you can take Sometimes you even gotta learn From other people